Okay, guys, welcome to video number two. All right. Um, in this one, we're going to do a couple of speed problems. This one's going to be a lot shorter because we've done some examples like this already. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to start with is crossing out the evil triangle. Okay, I know you guys have maybe used that before, but we're going to do it differently now. Okay. But what I'm going to do for you is show you guys how we can solve for each of these different variables, okay? So we're going to start with our basic equation, which is speed equals distance over time, okay? So when we're solving for speed, we're going to solve for our V, so we don't have to do anything. It's just distance over time, all right? So that one's easy. Our next one, we're going to start with our same equation because we're only going to be given this form on the test. But this time, we want to solve for D. Okay? Now, I know we've done this before, but I want to do this one more time. All right? So, what we're going to do is we, in order to get D by itself, we need to get rid of the T on this side. Okay? So, the way that we do that is because T is on the denominator, um, we are going numerator and denominator. That's the words I was trying to think of in the other video. Um, the numerator and the um, and the denominator. We need t to get out of off the bottom and onto the top on the other side. So we're going to multiply by t. When we multiply, that crosses them both out over here, and we need to keep all things equal in the equation. All right. So after we do all of that. It is going to result in distance now by itself equals television or speed times time. Okay? And our other one is going to be starting the same way. Velocity or speed equals distance over time. This time we want to solve for T. So T is on the bottom now. So now we're going to take two steps, all right? We need to get T on the top, all right? So there's two ways that we can do this. We can either flip them both. If we do that, we're going to get 1 over V equals T over D, and then we'll multiply our D out in order to get it by itself. So we're going to multiply it on top over here. So we're going to get T equals D over V. Now, the easier way that some of you guys might find it is to multiply our T out on both sides, just like we did before. Okay? Crosses it out there. Then that gives us D equals V times T, and remember in this case we want to get T still. Alright, so we're going to circle that again, and this time to get it by itself, we need to divide out V on both sides. Okay, so it'll cross out there, and we will be eventually wind up with T equals, or time equals distance over speed. Those are our three basic equations and how we get to them mathematically. Okay, so let's do some problems. Number one, Ronnie flies to England for her dream vacation. It takes her about eight hours to travel the 4,218 miles. Okay, uh, so in, to do any of these types of questions, we want to set up cues. All right, so first we're going to do our knowns. We know that our time equals eight hours. That's our first thing given. Our other thing given is our distance. She equals 4,218 miles. Okay? Our unknown is what is the speed of her plane. So we want to know speed. Our equation that we're going to use, this one's simple. Speed equals distance over time. Then we're going to substitute and solve. Speed equals 4,218 miles divided by 8 hours. So, we plug that in our calculator, which I had to go find just now. 
And once we plug that in, we get 527.25. And we want to remember, we have to make sure to remember our units, miles per hour. Okay? That is pretty fast. All right. So, our next one. Okay? Our next one we're going to have to solve for a different variable. Okay, Seth runs the 5K, which is 5 kilometers, during his cross-country meet. He knows his average speed during the race is 0 0.26 kilometers per minute, but he forgot what his total time was. How could he solve this problem? By using Qs, Seth. By using Qs. All right, our known. We know his distance is 5 kilometers. We know that his speed... 0 0.26 kilometers per minute okay in our unknown he wants to know what his time was I'm going to set up our equation velocity equals distance over time I want to get time by itself so I'm going to multiply it on both sides cross it out that's going to give me D equals VT we're going to divide out our V that's going to give us time equals distance over speed. Okay, now we can substitute and solve. Time equals our distance was 5 kilometers divided by 0 0.26 kilometers per hour. Okay, um, those will cross out. And our hours will flip up to the top because it's in the bottom of the, it's on the denominator of a denominator. Um, so what we're going to end up with is nineteen point two three minutes. All right. And from there, we could even do dimensional analysis to take our zero point two three seconds or 0.23 minutes and figure out how many seconds that is. So in one minute there are 60 seconds. We're just going to do this quickly. And that's going to give us 14, about 14 seconds. So about 19 minutes and 14 seconds. All right, so we can kind of see how we can start to combine the things we've used to make them useful. All right, and our last one. Andrew hits the ball and runs at a speed of 18 feet per second for a total of 15 seconds. Assuming he's playing on a standard baseball field with 90 feet between bases, okay, um, did he hit a single, double, triple, or home run? Knowing this will make Andrew very happy. Okay, so... Andrew, of course, is going to start with Q's because I know that he has been paying attention, as usual. Okay? And Andrew's going to first write in his speed. He knows that that is 18 feet per second. He knows his time is 15 seconds. Okay? He knows that it's 90 feet between bases, but that's kind of extraneous, and we're going to use that to solve the last part, okay? So we're going to not confuse ourselves with that. Our unknown is our distance, okay? So our equation, velocity equals, or I'm sorry, speed equals distance over time. We're going to multiply T on both sides, cancel them out there. That's going to give us distance equals speed times time. Okay, we're going to go and substitute and solve. 18 feet per second times 15 seconds. Our seconds cancel out. He's going to go 270 feet. Okay, so that's his distance. Now we want to know if he had a single, double, triple, or home run. So if it's 90 feet per each base, we can take his 270 feet 
divide it by 90 feet for each base and that's going to give us three bases so he hit a triple nice job Andrew nice job that concludes our second lecture for the day so get to work be good for the sub